Welcome to our latest episode, The Power and Importance of Integrated Advice in Multinational Transaction. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about why it's so important to get integrated advice when you're involved in international transactions. I'm also gonna talk about how having the right lead advisor in multinational transactions is gonna ensure that you get the proper advice, integrated advice, so you have a comprehensive strategy and can achieve the best outcome. And finally, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to choose the right lead advisor. Welcome to the Wealth Uncensored Podcast, straight talk about everything that impacts your wealth. In each episode, I share what I've learned through my own experience and two decades of helping high net worth clients structure their affairs to minimize taxes and protect their assets for the next generation. I'll also feature special guests who are experts in their own field, sharing their knowledge and experience to help you protect what's yours. I'm your host, Jimmy Sexton. Let's dive into today's show. So let's talk a little bit about the consequences of failing to get integrated advice. So many high net worth individuals and family offices get involved in complex multinational transactions that involve a lot of different legal systems and a lot of niche areas of the law, right? And unfortunately, many of them fail to get the right advice because structuring these transactions in order to achieve the best possible outcome requires not only getting advisors from every single jurisdiction that's involved in the transaction, but also in very niche areas of the law, like regulatory matters, corporate governance, risk mitigation, tax, financial planning, estate planning, succession planning. You need to think about cultural and local nuances, future trends, and also potential upcoming changes in the law that may impact the transaction once it's concluded, right? And in my experience, this kind of plays out in one of, of three ways, right? So a lot of times, family offices and high net worth individuals will fail to get advice at all, right? Like they're just gonna jump into the transaction and let the chips fall where they may. Sometimes this is due to just recklessness and import impulse control. More often it has to do with the people are just cheap, right? And they don't wanna pay for the advice, they think it's gonna be fine. This generally does not yield the best results as you can imagine. And in fact, it oftentimes leads to a lot of problems that then need to be cleaned up later, which winds up being more expensive and more work than just having done it right in the first place. And after the cleanup, the result is generally still not as good as it could have been had it been done right in the first place, right? Or let's say they do get advice. This is sort of the second problem that I see. They only rely on a single advisor that's kind of their go-to guy that has fairly broad knowledge about a lot of jurisdictions and a lot of different sort of niche areas and of, of the law, but he's not really an expert in any, right? So this guy could actually be the right lead advisor, but he's not the only dude that you should be relying on, right? Because he just doesn't have that in-depth knowledge in those jurisdictions and in those niche areas that you really need an expert in, right? So, well, like I said, well, that's better than getting no advice at all. The third scenario is they hire the right advisors, but don't have someone coordinating all of them and integrating that advice into a comprehensive strategy, right? So the problem with this approach is that often people don't know what issues need to be considered and, and, and what questions to even ask the advisors that you bring in, right? So if you have let's say you're the guy who's in charge of the family office or you're the high net worth individual and you're going out and hiring all these advisors and trying to like coordinate the advice yourself, the problem is gonna run it, you're gonna run into is a lot of times you have no clue about every issue that needs to be considered, right? Or what are the right questions that need to be asked them. This is where a good lead advisor comes into play. Because like I said, to try to do it yourself and coordinate it all yourself is usually going to lead to worse results than could have been achieved had you hired a lead advisor. So in my opinion, if you're involved in multinational transactions, the way you're gonna get the best advice and achieve the best results is to hire a lead advisor that has broad knowledge about various jurisdictions, treaties, regulatory matters, 
and very various niche areas related to the transaction. Now, the lead advisor's role here is not to be your sole advisor and advise you on all these areas, but to curate a team of advisors and based on that, give you a comprehensive strategy and integrated advice, right? Because your lead advisor is gonna know which advisors are needed, which issues need to be considered, and which questions to ask, right? Your lead advisor is then gonna gather all this information, he's gonna analyze it, he's gonna come to you with a comprehensive strategy and be able to give you integrated advice, right? This is how you achieve superior results. So how do you go about choosing a lead advisor? And I'm gonna tell you, here's some of the things that I would recommend considering when you're trying to decide on who to hire as your lead advisor, right? So first, experience and expertise, right? I mean, this one's kind of obvious. So look for advisors with a pre proven track record in handling complex multinational transactions, right? Ensure they have specific knowledge that's relevant to your requirements, like cross-border taxation, international estate planning, or investment strategies. Like I said before, they should have an understanding of, of, of multiple jurisdictions. Now, they might not be an expert in each one, but that's not necessary because they're gonna go hire the experts in each one. But they still have to have a general understanding, right? So they should have a, a, a good understanding of, of, of these various jurisdictions where the, where, that the transaction is gonna touch, and they should have experience in working with international clients and a good general grasp of international financial regulations and treaties and things like that. They should also have a solid network of specialists, right? Because you're probably not gonna have your own network, so you're gonna have to rely on them to go out and leverage their network to find the specialists that are needed, like tax experts, legal consultants, and, and other lo local advisors. And then they can coordinate that and give you the integrated advice. And so, like I said, you need to make sure that they have a, a, a solid, robust network with everybody in, in, in the relevant jurisdictions and fields that they're going to be able to rely on in or, order to give you the advice that you need and achieve the best results, right? You also want to make sure that they have good communication skills, right? You want to make sure that they have the ability to explain complex concepts in a clear and understandable manner, right? You obviously you need to look for somebody that understands your goals, who's gonna to listen to you and, and take that all into consideration when they're doing their job. They should have good interpersonal skills because you're gonna be working closely with your lead advisor. Personal compatibility is key, right? You don't wanna have somebody that you have a bunch of friction with. You should feel comfortable discussing sensitive matters with them and obviously trust them, right? You should also consider their ability to work effectively with other advisors and stakeholders. You also want personalized service, right? So the advisor should be able to demonstrate their ability to provide solutions tailored to your specific needs rather than just kind of issuing generic advice. They should understand your long-term goals and be able to adapt their strategy as the situation evolves because it ultimately will, it always does, right? And then reputation and references. So make sure you check their professional standing and reputation in the industry. Maybe ask for some references or testimonials from other high net worth clients. I've found that this is kind of challenging though, right? Because most high net worth clients and family offices, they don't necessarily want people knowing who their advisors are or, or they don't necessarily want to be known to your other clients. So you can ask, sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not. And they should also have a proactive approach to it, right? They shouldn't just respond to your queries, but proactively anticipate issues and potential opportunities relevant to your situation, right? So they need to kind of stay on top of, they have, they have a global perspective, right? They need to kind of stay on top of global economic trends, regulatory changes, potential tax changes, things of, of, of that nature. And then of course, you know, understanding their compensation structure is also super important, right? This is something you want to address up front. Understand how their compensation is structured. It should be transparent, right? And, and you know, without conflicts of interest. And then consider how those fees potentially align with your interest, right? Is it a flat fee? Is it hourly rates? Is it a percentage of assets? Is it a piece of the deal? Is it a piece of some sort of savings or something like that? These are all things that need to be thought about, right? So when selecting a lead advisor, it's often beneficial to conduct interviews with multiple candidates to compare their qualifications, experience, what approach they're going to take. This process helps in finding the advisor 
who not only has the, the necessary professional qualifications, but also aligns well with your personal and financial goals and, and, and that the personality is matched, right? I mean, this is super important. So just to recap, to achieve the superior results in a multinational transaction, you need integrated advice in each jurisdiction and in each area that's gonna affect the transaction. And the best way to get this is by hiring a lead advisor to integrate the advice and give you a comprehensive strategy. I hope you found this episode useful and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Thank you for joining me on Wealth Uncensored, where we help you minimize taxes and protect your wealth for the next generation. If you like our show, be sure to subscribe and leave a review. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at info at esquiregroup.com. And don't forget to visit Esquire Group's website for more information on how we can help you secure your wealth. I'll be dropping knowledge again next week. Don't forget to join us.